Now it's time for my special guest. Hey, welcome Mr. Dancho, the political snitching farmer. Simple Simon's too busy sexting, and his behavior's too out of order. You grass up Chris Tune and him wife, after you don't get rich pan expenses. As an MP, you need more training, so right now you will get an intensive rush deal. Kick, 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 kick him out. Kick, 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 kick him out. Kick him out, kick him out, kick, 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 kick him out. Yes, it's Labour MP for Rochdale, Simon Danchuk. Simon, welcome back to News Thing. Good to be here. Pleasure to have you back on the show. Now, you're from the north, from a constituency that clearly voted to leave mm. the EU. So, is it true that you're all racists now? No, that's not true, oh. actually. No, that's completely untrue. Oh. Uh, but people do want to leave, and that's what we've got to support. I, I wanted to remain, and I campaigned to remain, but the majority of the country uh, want to leave, and that's what I think we should do. Uh, it is interesting in Parliament, though, I have to say, you, you go around the place, and the Conservative MPs are, are jubilant about the result, obviously. Uh, and they see us doing more trade outside the European Union now, so they want to do trade in the Commonwealth and things like that. They're sort of harking back to this sort mm. of colonial era. I think oh, they, they yeah. want us all wearing pith helmets and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, gin and tonic yeah, out exactly. on the port yeah, sort yeah. of scenario. Uh, now, Paul Nuttall's whole stick since he became leader yeah. has been based on UKIP taking Labour's place, especially in the North, in your territory. Now, are you just going to take that line down or are you prepared to fight him bare knuckle in a pub basement of his choice. Well, politics can get pretty rough, rough up in the north, and certainly mm. in Rochdale. And uh, and I, I think I'd uh, I think I'd have a good chance of fighting him. Actually, I'd uh, you know I'd, I think I could hold me on. I think uh, he says he was trained as a ninja. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> for, for <laughs> eight is. years by a sensei up a mountain in China. But who knows well, whether that's true? He could probably <laughs> prove it in some way. I'm sure <laughs> yeah, he could. Yeah, he's, right. he's got photos. Yeah. Now we're filming this before the by-election, mm. I should say, and take away the magical illusion of television. We are pre-recording this, but by the time it goes out, people will know what's happened in Copeland and in Stoke in these by-elections. Uh, tell me what you think might happen after the by-elections for your party. Of course, we will edit this to make you look wrong yeah, and stupid thank you. I should warn you that. No, I appreciate fair. that. But how yeah, do you yeah. see this panel? I think there's a number of scenarios. If uh, I think Labour's going to do badly, whatever the result, just, you know, because the results are going to be so close and that's not that can't be good for Corbyn but if we lose the seats then I think he's going to struggle to stay on as leader and it won't be so much the right wing within the Labour Party that are calling for him to go I think his own kind of people will be calling for him to go the other possible scenario is that if Labour do very badly then it's quite feasible and all the chatter around Westminster is that Theresa May the Prime Minister might well go to the country and call a general election sooner than we might think, because she would just increase the majority. The House would have to vote on that, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's not so, as straightforward so, as it used to be. You know, there will be a lot of Labour MPs mm. who will not want a general election no. because they'll be out of a job. I mean, even you well, will possibly. be looking at your constituency thinking, well, anything's possible. So you wouldn't necessarily... If she could try to call an election, it might be a strange situation where the opposition who would usually be the ones crying out for an election, would be the ones voting against it. And, but Labour MPs would look absolutely crazy to deny the public the opportunity to go <laughs> yeah. and, and say who should be in power. So we would have to vote. It's a rock and a hard place, but it you'd feel indeed. like Turkey's voting for Christmas. That's exactly you? what it would be like, yeah. Let's talk about Edward Heath, because obviously this is an area that you have a lot of knowledge about. Um, it's been reported that Wiltshire Police Chief is 120% convinced that Edward Heath was a paedophile. Is that an irresponsible claim, or do you agree that the evidence is there? I, I think there are some outrageous claims about uh, Edward Heath, you know, some of the stories that circulate on the internet and things. But having said that, I also think there are some serious allegations that are made against him, uh, and, and so there are some uh, alleged victims out there. And that means that those allegations have to be investigated to the satisfaction uh, of, of the victims and of the police themselves. And as uncomfortable as that might make some particularly conservative politicians who stick up for Heath, the truth is it has to be investigated. But do you feel it's almost like Britain isn't ready to know whether or not it had, in the recent past, a paedophile prime minister? Oh, well, I think Britain is not very good at dealing with these issues full stop. I think you're exactly right. I think other countries, have, uh, uh, in terms of child sexual abuse, have been much better at investigating it and, and calling into question what's been going on. I think Britain is very much behind the times, and the establishment often wants to cover this up. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. 